what an amazing day. It's been, I've been sat over there listening to stuff. It's so moving, isn't it? And I find sincerity sort of disgusting. And even I've really enjoyed it. <laughs> Hello, Kingston. It's so nice to be here. I like that you're the kind of people who see the sun and you think, no, not for me. Um, no, I want a dark room and intense, heavyweight ideas. My kind of people. Uh, <laughs> definitely like the dark side. Um, yeah, on my way here, I was so excited to be in the countryside, leaving London, and I saw these people like... I know, look, no, well, for me, this is the countryside. And I saw these people on boats, right? And there was these, like, you know, two young men, and it was so enjoyable watching them realise at the same time that they didn't have the upper body strength to row. <laughs> and I thought, that is life, isn't it? Just going round and round in a circle while your friends laugh at you. That is... <laughs> life finds a way. Um, but, yeah, hi, I am Charlie George. It's one of those classic brown lady names... Yeah, I don't know what my ancestors were trying to tell me with that one, but it wasn't be yourself, was it? Um, someone recently described me as like, um, if Alanis Morissette took a gap year in Sri Lanka, <laughs> wait, and got dysentery. <laughs> Upsetting and accurate. Uh, <laughs> I am an angry brown lady with IBS, yes. Uh, I'm just gonna own that. Uh, I'm actually in a WhatsApp group called Poo Chat. Yeah. It's just women with IBS talking about shit. Uh, it's actually one of the far superior WhatsApp groups. I highly recommend it. Uh, are you all from Kingston? No. no. Have you come from all different places? Oh, exciting. Like, um, who's the furthest away? Like, what, what, have we got anywhere sort of exotic or exciting? Just shout it out. California. California, Brazil, Switzerland. Oh my God, the gigs I've been doing, someone just goes, slough. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out. Chill out. Oh my God, California. That was so confident. That was like American confidence, the way you said that. <laughs> Brazil. Huh? Detroit. Detroit. <laughs> oh, it's always been my dream to be like, good night, Detroit. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not Detroit, is it? It's Kingston. Um... <laughs> Oh, so do we have anyone who is local and from Kingston? Yeah. That is so enthusiastic. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Sounds like a balloon letting itself go. Amazing. Are you, are you down here? <laughs> or up there? Okay, cool, great. Were you born in Kingston? Yeah, and what's it like growing up here? <laughs> Don't pull any punches or anything. Um, well, you know, it could be worse. Like, I'm not from London originally. I live there now because I've got no self-respect, okay? Uh, I just see my landlord and I think, yeah, why not sponsor your property portfolio? Sure, let's do it. <laughs> Sign me up for another 12 months. I can't resist. Um, but no, I'm not from London originally. Uh, I'm from a little town in the southwest of England in Wiltshire called Swindon. <laughs> don't work for Swindon, okay? Don't. Uh, <laughs> If you don't know Swindon, for some of you from really cool places like Detroit, um, Swindon uh, is a town that's probably most famous for a roundabout um, and for being the teenage pregnancy capital of the UK. <laughs> yeah. uh, my careers advisor actually used to say to me, Charlie, girls from Swindon, they always end up one of two things, pregnant or receptionist. <laughs> Luckily, I got a really great telephone manner and no one wanted to sleep with me. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know what the nightlife is like in Kingston upon Thames. Hopefully I'll find out tonight. Um, but uh, in Swindon, uh, in the West Country in the UK, it's basically like drinking cider in a park. Um, and where I grew up, we used to have this thing called wet nappy nights. Yeah, exactly. What? <laughs> nappy nights. Presumably named so that all the local sex offenders knew exactly where to find us. Okay? <laughs> Wet, because these parties were exclusively foam parties. Yes, does anybody remember these? They sound hygienic. They are really not, okay? Foam, basically, is like puberty's camouflage. Yeah. If you want to get off with someone you are ashamed to be seen with, what you need is a guy called Gary with a hose, okay? Now, Gary's just going to be firing sort of cheap washing up liquid into the club night experience. Yeah. 
this washing up liquid will definitely give you a rash, okay? <laughs> now, uh, I'd be there getting off with a ginger. <laughs> because minorities in the countryside have got to stick together. <laughs> also, I was raised religious. I love a ginger, you know. It's, 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 it's all like flamey, isn't it? It reminds me of the fires of hell. <sighs> um, <laughs> why does I say that? Um, and we were doing that teenage kissing. Some of you might remember it. It's sort of like a machine wash of tongues, basically. You, you, you hold the waist and you just get in there. <laughs> now, obviously, we'd both be looking out the corner of our eye at the girl we actually wanted to be kissing. Okay. And then he turned to me, right, in this sort of sexy foam helmet. <laughs> and he'd say, Charlie, what is it like to be black? <laughs> and before I had time to explain to him the complexity of my racial heritage and that I'm not, I just slid right off his body. <laughs> <laughs> what a relief. Oh, God. It's quite nice down here on this, this furry bath mat, I have to say. It's good. Um, I don't know who Ted is, but I really like what he's done with the place. <laughs> so, so stupid. What a silly goose. Um, uh, but yeah, look, it's like my mother always used to say, right? She used to say, you'll never get to heaven dressed like that, young lady. Uh, and that was because I was raised by a white woman made entirely of Pinot Grigio and Spam. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> I was actually raised by my single parent, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, daily male reading... Jehovah's Witness mother. Yeah. Because Swindon wasn't enough. Uh, are you familiar with the Jehovah's Witnesses? Yeah? Any witnesses in? Any believers in the house? No. They're never in, are they? Well, it's been about 15 years since I last prophesied the end of days. Uh, obviously, I did nearly relapse recently with everything that's been going on. <laughs> nearly knocked on the doors of all my housemates and asked them to repent their sin. Um, but yeah, my mum is like hilarious. Uh, how can I describe her? She's, I mean, I love her, but she's bonkers. She's like a cross between Rab C. Nesbitt and Hyacinth Bouquet. <laughs> If you don't know who that is, basically an angry, drunk Scottish woman shouting about Jesus in a Laura Ashley dress. <laughs> that, is my, that is my mother. Uh, but it's not all bad growing up with a racially different parent. Did anyone else here grow up with a racially different parent? <laughs> it's not the 80s, you can say. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's quite fun. Like, I used to uh, play games, you know, like, I, I used to play this game where I pretend to be trafficked. <laughs> Have you played it before? <laughs> just sort of slowly wind the window down in a public car park and just mouth, help me. <laughs> Sorry, just right, love. Uh, sometimes you can take it in a different direction. You know, people would be like, Charlie, who is that white woman who drops you off? And I'd be like, don't know. <laughs> the help, I don't know their names. Yeah, we were actually a working class family. Um, sometimes people think I'm bosh. Uh, my accent changes depending on the room I'm in. I think that's sort of like a survival thing. And so that Pretty Patel doesn't put me on a boat. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but, thank you. Um, but yeah, we were working class, but like my mum is hilarious. We were like that kind of working class that's like aspirationally wants to be wealthy. I think that's the whole thing in this country, isn't it? It's like you can sort of hate yourself uh, if you're poor sort of thing. So my mum is like really into the royals and like period dramas and stuff. And she used to dress me and my sister up like Victorian children <laughs> in pinafores for old fashioned photo shoots. Yeah. Looking back, two mixed race girls dressed as servants on the wall. <laughs> oh, God, mum. Not great. Um, but yeah, I mean, and I'd love to have some fabulous story for you, Kingston, about how I gave up my religion uh, for something really far superior. But no, uh, it was just my stupid fanny. Uh, yeah. If it wasn't for Melissa from Bible study, I could have been one of the 144,000 who made it into heaven. Oh, nightmare. <laughs> yeah, my, my vagina single-handedly stripped me of my right to ascend. Um, yeah. 
I mean, that's the story, isn't it? Um, but yeah, no, I was actually excommunicated uh, for, uh, and kicked out of home when I was 13 for my sexuality. Uh, they're not big on uh, homosexuality in the Jehovah's Witness community. Uh, um, I was actually kicked out in what we now call the infamous fingering incident of 1999. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've ever had to be collected early from a sleepover before. Do you know what's worse, right? The phone call or the silent ride home? <laughs> Trying to resist the urge to sniff your fingers. Um, <laughs> they said, we'll put you on a bit later, so... <laughs> <laughs> They'll be ready for it by then. <laughs> I hope so. Um, but yeah, I mean, I joke about it, because humour's always been my defence mechanism. Like, and, and, and I think it is kind of funny. It is funny now. Like, that's your tragedy plus time equals ha ha ha, yeah, woohoo. Um, but like, it doesn't make me, and I also, it's like, come on, don't put Eve naked in the garden with fruit if you don't want me to finger her. Like, <laughs> <laughs> divine humour. Um, but I do find humour is, is an amazing tool for like, coping with stuff. But when I was actually first kicked out, it was quite scary. 13, no home. And, uh, and I actually um, went and lived uh, in sheltered housing in a place called The Foyer. Uh, and they have them like up and down the country. I mean, they really should have workshopped the name, Foyer. <laughs> Doesn't scream welcoming. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and I lived there for a while, and then I moved to like Bristol, um, and I went to like circus school. So I had like a really good. Um, there's always a good drama teacher, isn't there, who sort of just saves the lives of young people, um, with zip zap boing. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Instead of the Oscars, I think we should just go back and like you know just apologise to our drama teachers for some of our earlier work. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he was amazing and he, he helped me out and various people helped me out and I, uh, and, I, and I moved to Bristol. Does anyone know Bristol? Yeah, it's a great city, isn't it? It's also in the West Country. It's made entirely of ketamine. Um, <laughs> you can get hit in the face by a dreadlock every day. Good fun. Uh, and I went to circus school there, which was, circus school was really good if you're like a wayward kid. It was a lot of us wayward teens at circus school um, because there's a lot of like discipline and risk and stuff like that. And seriously, my careers advisor did say, you know, the pregnancy and receptionist thing. So expectations for me my whole life have been quite low, you know, like, um, and so going to circus school made me think, oh, you know, no, I'm really strong. I could do anything. Um, uh, like run a dance company that doesn't make any money for a really long time, <laughs> which is what I did after circus school. And, and I used to do circusy stuff. Um, and I also used to work in a care home for a while uh, in this country as well. And you, know, you haven't lived uh, until you've been told to piss off back to a country that can't be remembered. <laughs> Oh, is there anything more British than forgotten racism? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh. Um, but yeah, it's been a roundabout journey getting here, basically, is what I'm saying. But I started, um, I wasn't planning on telling you this, but it's been such a lovely time and, and everybody's opened up a little bit, so why not? Um, but yeah, so I started comedy uh, when I was working in the NHS. And... Um, because I was like a physiotherapist assistant, which is a classic good job for a, for a dancer when you don't really earn enough money performing at festivals and stuff. And I remember this patient there, and um, he was having a really horrible time. Like, he'd had a stroke, like multiple strokes, and he had something called aphasia where he, like, couldn't speak anymore. And he couldn't communicate with his family, uh, and his wife had cancer, and his mum was in palliative care, who was dying. And we used to, like, wheel uh, the patients into, uh, like, this um, therapy gym to do like physiotherapy activities with them. And one of the things that you do when you have a stroke is like your limbs drop. And we used to do electrical stimulation uh, to keep the, from <coughs> keep the muscles from wasting. And as I went to go and plug this guy in, he's having a terrible time in his life, right? And I go to plug him in and he does the best impression I have ever seen of being electrocuted. <laughs> I nearly have a heart attack, right? And then he just goes... <laughs> <laughs> and that single moment is what made me go and do a stand-up course. And Because um, uh, I thought, do you know what? Like, he just completely won the room. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You're going through all that stuff and you still have the last laugh. I think, yeah, that's what it's about, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I, similar to Tanya, I don't really like labelling things you can't control. Like, a lot of people assume I'm a lesbian. 
And I'm like, nah. Can't be narrowing down your options when you've got a personality like this. <laughs> anyway, we all know it's not gender that makes a relationship, is it, you know? It's personality flaws and fear of dying alone. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, I can't be relied upon to make rational or consistent choices with my genitals. I mean, who could? Who could safely stand next to their sexual history and say, yes, this is a reflection of who I am? and my best choices. <laughs> no, let's face it, if your sexual history reflected who you were, it would be like, drunk, missed the last bus, <laughs> depressed at a wedding buffet. <laughs> no? I don't want to identify with that. You know? Like, I love women, obviously. Like, they're amazing, aren't they? Like a good massage, sort of violent and unpredictable. Uh, <laughs> I also like women who look like men. I'm currently dating someone who's non-binary. And, you know, I can even find myself attracted to, you know, chubby men with beards. Who knew? Maybe it's some kind of transference of my love of muff to the face. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't say I was bisexual, though. Like, I wouldn't say I was bilingual, just because I know where the bibliotheque is. <laughs> But no, I do love men, actually. Like, people always think you're sort of man-hating if you're queer and stuff. And I'm like, ah, oh, no, I love men. They're great. I mean, I know they get a bad rep, what with all the rape, murder and war. But, like... <laughs> still a fan. I believe in second chances, guys. Um, <laughs> but, like, they won't go out with me anymore because apparently I'm too competitive and aggressive. <laughs> they don't like it when you, like, fight me. <laughs> My dick's bigger than yours. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but no, my favourite genre of man, right, um, is I like... Thank you. Um, I, I like um, depressed boys with long hair and erectile dysfunction who help you change the sheets on your period. <sighs> yeah. I like my men like I like my coffee. White and weak. <laughs> Some vanilla latte fans in. Um, but it's annoying when your, your sexuality is not very reliable, you know? And, uh, and, I, and I am pansexual. And it, it's just frustrating, isn't it? You know, I'm like a frog on an, At an Attenborough documentary. You know, that's kind of my sexuality, really. But you can't just knock on the door to your mum, can you? And say, I'm only a bit gay. Maybe I can live in the shed. That's <laughs> not how it works. Um, but yeah. Um, Look, I'm running out of time, and I really... There's so many fun things that I wanted to tell you. I have got, like, affirmations I was going to talk to you about. Like, has anyone else been trying to sort of access joy? <laughs> yeah. It's hard, isn't it? Every now and then I feel like, oh, God, is it just, it's just like a massive bin fire out there, isn't it? It's tough. Um, which I think is just another way of me telling you I had a panic attack to a YouTube meditation the other day. <laughs> yeah. Like, the woman on the audio couldn't pronounce some of the words properly. Like, they're annoying at the best of times anyway, aren't they? They slow down the syllables too much. You know, it's like, inhale. <laughs> Get a move on, I'm trying to relax. <laughs> Exhale. And just let go of your anxiety. So, uh, I wouldn't be a queer woman if I didn't tell you one of my dreams, okay? <laughs> and, and one of my dreams uh, has always been to dance on Soul Train. Does anybody know Soul Train, you know? <laughs> exactly, amazing. They've got, like, clips of it online. It's to be, like, an amazing dancer on Soul Train. Let's see what we've got in tonight. Um, but I need two people who are up for it. Is there anybody here who's had too much caffeine and wants to just shake it off? Maybe too many snacks? Come on, come on, be brave. Come on, Kingston. C come on, California, you were like yelling out loud. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, yeah, okay, come on, come on. We're running out of time. And one more. Yes, I love this bravery. One more, one more. You, okay, well, it's just you and me right now. No, no, no. Yes! Courage! That's what we need. Come on. 
We've got to do it fast um, because we're running out of time, but it will be very um, quick. So if one of you stands there and the other one here, and we'll make our little Soul Train lineup. Um, basically, you know, just the standard choreography. <laughs> no pressure, sort of five, six, seven, eight, and one, you know, that kind of thing. Um, uh, <laughs> and if you could give us all your love and support, I'd like to dedicate this to uh, Mr. Putin. Nobody's harder than me, I'm a breaker of chains, I'm living it free Trust what I said and not what you see, nobody keep it in order like me I'm really a beast and I'm out in the wild, I'm well in my eye and I want it right now If that's a vow and I gotta get it, the victory's mine You tryna compete, it's wasted time I came from the bottom but now I'm in front of the line In front of the haters, I turn into motivators I don't owe them no favors and any beef and get catered I'm on my way, doing my flex, running it up, getting my checks I got the power, give me respect, I live this life and on to the next Thank you so much, Kingston. I've been Charlie George. See you later. Have a great evening. <laughs>